Today I have a really exciting project for you guys. We are going to create the red light green light game from the series Squid Game. So if you haven't watched that series yet, the way this game works is you have this doll and you, you'll be given a specific amount of time and in that time you have to move from this corner to this corner. But the catch is you can only move when she's not looking at you. If you try to move when she looks forward you'll be eliminated. So let's see that in action. So if I refresh the game will start. The game has started and we can move. We can press arrow key to move. But if we try to move when she's looking forward, as you can see, it says we lost. So that's the rule. So let's try to win this game. And there we have won the game. So this is a really exciting project. I hope you're equally excited as I am. So make sure you like the video if you haven't already yet. And let's get started. Okay, to create this game, we're going to be using 3JS. 3JS is a JavaScript 3D library. It uses WebGL to render graphics on the canvas. This is really powerful and easy to get started. So if you have no experience with 3JS, don't worry because we'll be doing a lot of copy pasting from the documentation and I'll be going over the codes briefly. Okay, so let me close this window. And in my file explorer, as you can see, I have created a folder called Squid Game Tut. We'll, we'll be working on this folder. So let's open it up with VS Code. So click on open with VS Code. And now we're going to create the index.html file. So let's say index.html. And we're also going to create two folder. One is JS for the JavaScript file and one is CSS for the CSS file. So CSS like so. Now in the CSS, let's create a style.css file. So let's say style dot css and in the javascript we need a main.js file so new file main.js so now let's link them in our html first let's create the basic markup let me close the sidebar ctrl b to close the sidebar now exclamation mark tab and it will create the basic boilerplate here let's link our style sheet so let's say link and the href will be css forward slash style dot css also link our javascript so let's say script source equals to js forward slash main.js like so and let me open it up with our live server. So click on open with live server. And it will be opened in localhost colon 5500. Okay, now we want to use 3JS in our project. So let's download the 3JS. So go to go to your Chrome and search for 3JS GitHub. And the first link will take you to the GitHub page of 3JS. So from here, click on the build button. And then click on the 3.main.js. So dot .main basically means is the compressed version. It will load faster. Now click on the raw button. After that you can click Control S to save it. And we want to save it in our project folder. So navigate to your project folder. Go to the JavaScript folder. And we want to save it as 3.main.js. So click on save. Okay now if we, if we open up our sidebar. And in the JavaScript folder, we'll see we have the 3.main.js. So let's, let's link that file. So we're going to say script source equals to js forward slash 3.main.js, like so. Okay, now let's go to the 3.js documentation page. And here, click on the documentation. And in the documentation page, you'll see we have a lot of codes that we can copy paste to get started. So let me copy all these codes. Control C and paste it. Control V, like so. And let me close the sidebar again. And now if you go to our page, you'll see we have this black canvas so let's see what's happening so first we're creating a new scene by saying new 3 dot scene so scene is basically what we see to see it we need a camera so in the second line we're creating a new camera by saying new 3 dot perspective camera so we have many types of camera the perspective camera is most basic so in the documentation if we search for that here is the perspective camera as you can see the the perspective camera takes four argument the fob the aspect the near and far so this will make sense if you are into photography or camera otherwise you can leave this default this will work just fine then we are creating a renderer so the renderer is what is used to render all the graphics in our canvas then we are saying renderer dot set size and passing window dot inner width and window dot inner height so basically we are saying the renderer should be the size of our window and then the renderer dot dom element will give us the canvas and we are appending that canvas to our document dot body so if we save it this we get this black canvas and but we have this little white space on left top and left so let's try to remove that in the css so let's say target everything and we're going to say the margin should be zero and padding should be zero so margin zero and the padding can also be zero if we save this as you can see now the white space is gone okay now let's try to add a shape in our scene so let's see let's go back to the documentation so if you scroll down actually if you go back and then scroll down as you can see we have some more code so let me copy all of them again Control c 
control these. So first we are creating a box geometry. So in 3D world the shapes are basically geometry. We have many types of geometry. We have box geometry, we have sphere geometry, we have cylinder geometry, we have polygon etc. So the box is the basic geometry. We use box geometry to create cubes. So a geometry is made out of triangles or vertices. So we need to wrap our geometry in with a material. So there are many type of material but for now we just want to give it a color. So we are using the mesh basic material which is basically just a color. So we are specifying the color here and then we are creating the mesh by combining the geometry and material here. And finally we have to add that cube to our scene. So we are saying scene.add cube. So if, if you now save it and open up the browser, open up that in browser as you can see we can see it. That is because every time we add something to our scene or update something we have to call the renderer.render .render function and we have to pass the scene and camera so now if we save it as you can see now we can see the see the cube now by saying camera dot position dot z equals to 5 we are basically specifying how far from the scene should be our camera so if i were to make it make the number smaller now the camera is more near to the scene so it appears bigger if we were to make it a bigger now the camera is more far so this object appears to be smaller so so, so 5 is a good number so let's keep, leave it at 5 so every time we add a shape to our scene or update anything we have to call the renderer dot render function but manually calling this can be a pain which is why we use this code this block of code so let me copy this and then exp i will explain to you and paste it here so first we are creating in the animate function in the animate function we are calling the renderer dot render and we are passing scene and camera so let me just move it down i like it to i like to put it in the in the very bottom but it doesn't matter really okay so what is happening in the request animation frame we are passing the animate function so what what the request animation frame will do is call the animate function again and again so if i were to console log something here so as if i say console dot log hello world and in the browser if i now open the console you'll see hello world is being printed again and again so basically the animate function will be called again and again so now we don't have to manually call this function call the renderer dot render function here okay now let's look at some animations we can animate our cube so let's try to animate our cube cube so in the animate function we can say something like cube dot rotation cube dot rotation oops cube dot rotation dot x plus equals to 0 0.01 so basically it keep increasing the rotation dot x so if we now save it as you can see our cube is now rotating in the x axis if we were to say rotation dot y it would rotate in the z axis if we were to say rotation dot z it would rotate in the z axis so the number basically is specifying how fast it should rotate so if we were to make it 0.5 now it rotates faster if we were to make it even smaller now it is rotating very very slowly okay let me remove this code and let me remove this actually let us just comment it comment this out for now so we don't want the cube instead what i want is the doll so how we can create the doll so so in the sketch hub i have found this 3d model of the doll so this guy created it and he is allowing us to use it for free so, so you just have to create an account in sketchup after that you can click on download 3d model and download the gltf version so click on download and it will start downloading it by the way i will leave the link to this page in the video description and i'll also leave the link to the finished code in the video description so you'll be able to get everything from there so if you decide to follow along and get stuck you can refer to that code okay let's wait for this to finish okay the download is now complete so we can right click and click on show in folder and then I'm going to click on extract files and let's say the folder name should be models so let me rename this to models so now this zip file has been extracted in this models folder here we have all the files so let me click on the cut and let's put it in our project folder so so my project is in www and then inside the squid game tut and I'm going to paste the folder here so click on paste and we can close the file explorer now and close this tab and if we open up our sidebar again you'll see we ha now have this models folder inside that we have the files for the 3d model so now let's see how we can use the 3d model with 3js okay if I go to the documentation page again and search for gltf here you see the gltf loader click on this and this again gives us some example on how we can load a 3d model so let me copy this copy this line of code so control c and control v so first we are creating a new gltf loader model but to be able to use this gltf loader we have to first add it to our javascript so again go to the 3js github page and then click click on the examples 
and then the and then click on JavaScript folder. After that, go to the loaders, and here you will see the GLTF loader. So click on that, and again we can click on the raw button and press Ctrl S to save it. So we have to save it as GLTF loader.js. So save. As you can see, the GLTF loader has been added to our project. So let's link it in our JavaScript also. So let's in our HTML also. So let's say script source equals to this time it will be js forward slash gltf loader dot js like so now this line here would have worked if we were to install the gltf loader with npm and imported it but since you are using since we are using the regular script file instead of just saying gltf loader we have to say 3 dot gltf loader so simply say 3 dot gltf loader and now this should work let's see what next we have to do so after that we have to call the loader dot load function to load our 3d model so let's do that so we can say loader loader dot load and here we have to we have to specify the path to our 3d model so our 3d model file is in the models folder after that we have this scene dot gltf so let's say dot dot forward slash since we are in the javascript folder we have to go one folder up then in the models folders that's why we are saying dot dot forward slash models and then we are going to say scene.gltf scene now this loader.load .load function will load this gltf and once the loader is load we will have a callback function executed so this callback function so let's create the body of this function here so the this callback function will receive the loaded gltf so let's call it gltf and then we can say scene.at gltf.scene and now if we save it and go to the project as you can see we can see nothing let's see why is that let's open up our console so we don't have any error but we still can see it that is because currently in our scene we don't have any light we need a light to be able to see objects or models so let's add some light so again let's go to the documentation and search for light in 3js again we have various type of light but the most basic light is the ambient light so click on the ambient light and let's copy this code again and let's paste it let's say let's paste it here control v so first we're creating a new ambient light and then here the here we're specifying the color of our light in css you may have said hashtag 404040 but in javascript we simply say 0x and then the code so th this is the code and we can delete this comment we don't need it so now if we save this and go back and as you, as you can see we have this doll okay so let's change the light color to white so let's say fff fff and now we can see the doll much clear but the doll is very big so let's scale it down so we're gonna say c gltf dot scene dot scale so we're gonna call the scale function and we're gonna say dot scale dot set we have to call the set function to set the scale okay now since we are in a 3d world we have three dimensions and let's say we want to scale it to 0 0.4 on all dimensions so let's say 0 0.4 0 0.4 0 0.4 like so and now if we save it it should be scale so it's the spelling is s c a l e now if we save it as you can see now the doll is a lot smaller but but one problem you'll see is if i try to resize my screen as you can see the sca canvas does not resize okay let's try to make this responsive to make this responsive we're going to use this block of code so let's see what's happening so first we're saying window.addEventListener we're listening for the resize event and we're calling this function so whenever we we resize our screen so if we resize our screen this function will be executed and now let's see what we're doing in this function so first we're saying camera dot aspect equals to window dot inner width divided by window dot inner height since basically we have resized our screen the, now the aspect ratio of screen has been changed so now we are setting the aspect ratio to the new aspect to the new aspect ratio of our screen and now since we have changed the aspect ratio we have to call the update projection matrix on the camera and finally we have to say render.set size and to and set the size to the new window.inner width and window.inner height or the current inner width and inner height of our window so if we now save it and now if we resize our window as you can see now the canvas also resizes okay now let's bring the dollar a bit down so we can say gltf so let's say gltf dot scene dot position dot set and here we can set the position in the x y and the z axis so we want to set the position in z axis so let's try one so if we say one it goes up but we want it to go come down so we are, instead we can use negative one 
and negative one should be good enough. Now let's try to change the background color. So to change the background color, we are going to say renderer. So we can oops. To do that, we can say renderer dot set clear color. So set clear col color, and here we have to say specify a color. So I have already chosen a color. Let me use that. So the color I have chosen is B seven C three F three. If we now save it. As you can see now we have this bluish color and the second argument is basically the opacity of the color so we want one or full opacity okay now instead of just loading this loading the model like this i want to create a new class called doll so we can have some methods inside that class and easily call them so let's create a class called doll so we can say class doll inside that we're gonna have a constructor function so we can say constructor and let me cut all this code so cut and paste it here control v so if we now save this the doll won't be visible in the screen anymore that is because we have to create a new doll object so let's try to create a new doll object so let's say let doll equals to new doll so now if we save it now again we see this doll and also we, are, we i want to say this dot doll it should be doll equals to gltf dot scene so like so so now we can have some method in this class so let's take let's create a method called look back so look back this will make the doll look at the back side so so in this function we're gonna say doll dot rotation dot y to some value so let's try one so now if we were to say doll dot look back so doll dot look back let me call the function and save it and now if we look at our console you'll see we have some error that that is saying cannot read properties of undefined so there is two reason for that so first reason is it takes some time for our model to load so let's use a set timeout so we can say set timeout and let's say we are going to call this function we are going to call the doll dot so we are going to call the doll dot look back after let's say one, one second so 100 1000 millisecond if we save this we'll see we again have some error so it is saying cannot read properties of undefined that is because we have used the regular function here so if you use regular function it creates its own context so now that now inside the function we're saying doll, this dot doll we're saying this function dot doll so so we want this we want this to point to the this point to this class so we can't use the regular function we are going to use the arrow function like so now if we save this after one second as you can see that doll rotates so let's try doll should rotate to let's say negative one and now let's try negative two okay i think negative 3.15 will make the doll look backward so now as you can see if we call the look back function the doll looks at backward so we can also have a doll dot look forward function so we can say look forward we can say look forward and actually let's call it backward not back so the look forward function will simply say this dot doll dot rotation equals to zero so now if we were to say doll dot look forward and call it as you can see the doll looks forward and if we were to call doll dot look backward so look backward the doll will look at the backwards back side but now as you can see the doll rotates all on a sudden but we want we want the doll to rotate slowly gradually or animate so for that we are going to use an animation library called gsep so simply go to google and search for gsep and this is the official site of gsub so, so gsub is a really powerful animation library for javascript so click on the get started here and from here if we scroll down as you can see this gives us a cdn link so i'm going to copy this link ctrl c and paste it ctrl v so again click ctrl s to save it so we have to save it at gsub.main.js so save Okay, now let's open up our sidebar again and in the JavaScript folder, as you can see, now we have this gsep.min.js. So let's add it to our HTML also. So again, we're going to say script source equals to, it will be js forward slash gsep.min.js. Like so, if we now save it, let's close this tab, we don't need it anymore. And let's close our sidebar by saying control B. Now in the main.js, so here instead of saying doll.rotation.y equals to 3 point, negative 3 point something, let me comment this line out and here instead of this we are going to use the gsep so here we are going to say gsep.to the object we, the object we want is the this.doll.rotation.y dot 
rotation and the property way we want to animate is the y so we want to animate the rotation dot y so the rotation dot y should go from 0 to negative 3.15 in one second so that's that's what we're doing by saying g sub dot so if we now save it as you can see now now the doll animates smoothly so let's try to say 0 0.45 so in 450 millisecond now it takes 450 milliseconds for the doll to rotate. So now let's do the same for the look forward function. So control C and paste it here. Here we want to animate from negative 3.15 to 0. Like so. So now if we open up our console and call the doll dot look forward function, it looks forward but it animates forward direction. If we were to call the look backward function, it looks backward but, but it's rotating smoothly. So this is much better now. Okay, now let's create the track that the player have to cross. So let's say, let's create a function for that. So let's say function and let's call it create track. So create track. And create track function will create the track. To create the track, we are going to use cubes. So we are going to use like three cubes. So to create cubes, we know we have to do all this. So let's create a utility function for that. So we are going to say function create cube so create cube and in this function we can simply copy these codes so control X and control V let me uncomment this and fix the indentation like so okay now let's try to call this create cube function in our create track function so let me so let's call that function here like so and let's call the create track function now so create track if we now call the function and save it as you can see now we have this cube okay let me comment out the code for the doll for now and now if we save it as you can see we have this cube but we don't want the cube to be this size we want to specify the size so let's see how we can do that so let's again go to the box geometry so we can say box geometry so as you can see when creating the geometry we can pass argument so we so we can pass the width the height and the depth of our cube so let's do that so so in the create cube function we are going to receive argument called size and when creating the box geometry we are going to pass the size dot height we are going to pass the size dot w for width size dot h for height and size dot d for the depth okay now where we are calling the create cube function let's pass the size so we're going to say the width should be the width should be let's say 0.2 so it will be a skinny cube and the height can be let's say 1.5 and the depth can be 1 so let's say d equals to 1 so now if we save this this is how our cube looks like but now we want one cube to be on this side and one cube on this side so the function will also take a position x so let's say position x so and inside the function we are going to say cube dot position dot x equals to position x so now in the function if we were to pass some position so let's say the position x can be let's say 3 now it is in this side if we were to say negative 3 it will be on this side okay let's create some global variables so I'm going to create, create global variables here so let's add a comment here specifying that we're creating global variables here so let's say global variables and we are going to have one global variable for start position so here let's say we are going to have a variable called const start underscore post underscore position and let's say the start position will be 3 and the end position will be negative 3 or we can say negative start pause for negative 3 like so actually this should be end position so let's say end underscore position like so so now where we're calling the start create cube function we can pass the start position and if we save it we got a cube on the on this side and we can also call this function again this time we're gonna pass the pos position x as in position now we have one now we now we have one cube here but now the cube is kind of rotated so let's fix that so let's say our create cube function will also take a f take argument called rot x for rotation x and by default it will be zero like so so now we, inside the body we can also say cube dot rotation dot x equals to rot x like so so let's try to rotate it so let's try to rotate our cube so let's say the first cube's rotation should be let's try 0.4 oops 
Okay, so looks like the cube is being rotated in the wrong axis, so let's fix that. So let's call it rot y. And we want to rotate it rotate the y. And we want to say rotation dot y equals to rot y. Like so. So the so saying po point 0.4 is making it even worse. So let's say negative point 0.4. Now it's looking much better. Let's try point 0.3. Let's try 0.35 actually. And yeah, 0.35 should be good enough. So and for the in and for the second cube, let's copy this. And this time it will be positive 0.35, like so. Control V. And for this cube, the position x will be zero. And so it will be in the middle. So now we have this cube here. So now we have this cube in the middle. So let's also say rotation should be zero. And for this one, let's say the width will be starting position times 2. So if we do this, we will have a cube that spans from this side to this side. So let's give it a different color. Okay, so let's say our create cube function will also take a color as this argument. So let's say color and the default color will be let's say z 0x and the hexadecimal value. So the color I want is f fbc851. So now here instead of saying color equals to hashtag this color code we are gonna spa gonna, gonna say this will be the color that we pass in the co while calling the function so color if i now save it as you can see now our cube is this orange color okay the cube is on top of other cubes so in our create cube function now we are also going to return the created cube so we are going to say return cube like so okay so this is our biggest cube this one so let me just put it on top of other two and now since we are returning the cube where we can say this dot position dot z equals to and let's say the position dot z will be negative one so if we now save it this is how it looks okay instead of saying point one let's try instead of saying negative one let's try negative point eight and yeah point negative point eight works perfect and also for this one let's change the color so let's pass a color here so the color i have chosen is e5 a 716 so this is basically a darker orange color like so so now let's uncomment the new doll function here and it looks like the doll is getting overlapped with the cube so let's say so let's say the position z will be negative one so if we now save it now it looks better but now we have this gap so in so where we're specifying the width so let's also add some more value here so let's say 0.2 so now it is spanning from starting position to ending position like so. Okay, now just like the doll, let's create a class for our player, which will be just a circle. So let's create a class called player. So I'm going to say class player. And in the constructor function, so let's say constructor. So for the player, we want to create a sphere. So let's go to the documentation page and search for sphere. And here is a sphere geometry. So let's copy the codes, control C, and we can paste them here. And now instead of box geometry, we are using the sphere geometry. The sphere ge geometry takes the radius, the height segment, and width segment. And then we are creating the sphere with the um, geometry and material, like so. So now let's save it, go to our page, and let's try to create a player. So let's say const player. So we are going to say const player. If we now save it, we still can see the sphere. That is because the sphere is too big. So let's so let's say the radius should be let's try just one. So here is our sphere. This is still too big. So let's say 0.4 or let's say 0.2 or let's say 0.3 and 0.3 should be good for the color. Let's try the white color. So let's say FFF FFF. So now we have this white sphere. Now the position of the sphere should be in here. So let's say sphere dot position dot x. So sphere dot position dot x equals to the start position, like so. Now I want to create a function called run, and if we call the run function, the sphere should start moving. So we are going to create a function called run. Now before doing that, let's just say this dot player. So this dot player equals to sphere. And we also want to know some info about the player. So we are going to say this dot info or this dot player info. 
this dot player info will be our object so here we are again going to say and we are going to say position x equals to start position so basically where the sphere is currently so currently the sphere is here so we are saying position dot x equals to start position we also want the velocity so we are going to say velocity and we are going to say the velocity should be zero so velocity is basically speed so if the velocity is zero the sphere won't move the, but if the velocity is one the sphere will move with a speed of one so we also want a function called update And inside this function, first we are going to say this dot player info dot position x plus equals to this dot player info dot velocity. So keep increasing the player's position x, and then we are also going to say this dot player dot position x equals to that this dot equals to this dot player dot position x, and we have to keep calling the update function. So in the animate function here, we are, we are also going to say player dot update like so. But now the sphere is not moving. So if we were to say the velocity is 0 0.01, now the sphere moves in that direction. So instead of adding, let's subtract. So minus equals to. And now as you can see, the sphere moves in that direction. But initially we want the velocity to be zero. And when we call the run function, the velocity is velocity should increase. So we can say so in the run function we can say this dot player dot velocity equals to 0 0.3, 0 0.03, like so. So if we save it. And then if open up the console and call the player dot run. So if we were to say player dot run, as you can see the sphere is moving. But we want to call the run function when we press our up arrow key. So let's do that. So we are going to use some event handling here. So we are going to say window dot add event listener. So we are going to say window dot add event listener, and we are going to listen for the key down event. And here for now let's just say alert e dot key like so so now if i were to press some key it alerts the key if we press so if i were to press the up arrow key it says up arrow so here inside this function we want to check if we press the up arrow so we are going to say if e dot key equal equals to arrow up if it is then we want to call the player dot run function so we are going to say player dot run so now if i save it and now press uh, press the up arrow as you can see the player starts moving but when i release my finger from the up arrow we want the player to stop running so let's create a function called stop so here is our class so let's create a function called stop so in this function we are going to say this dot player info dot velocity equals to zero so we're setting the velocity to zero so player will stop moving so now we are also going to listen for the key up event. So copy this and here we are listening for the key up. So the key down is when you press down an arrow and key up is when you release that arrow. So inside here instead of calling the run function we are going to call the stop function like so. So if we now save it and press our arrow key it starts moving and if you release our arrow key it stops moving. Now to make this a little bit more interesting what we can do is instead of making the player stop all on a sudden we can make it so that it takes some time for the player to stop so we can do gsub.2 we can say this dot player info and we want to animate the velocity and let's say the duration to be for now let's say 1 like so. So if we press the arrow key the ball starts moving but if we release the arrow key the ball moves for a while and then stops so this will make the game even harder and more interesting but instead of duration to be 1, 1 is too long let's say 0.1 so 100 millisecond so it will take 100 millisecond for the player to stop running which will make the game a little bit more interesting and let's delete this comment we don't need it now i want to show a text here so let's create a text so you can create a text with 3js as well but i am going to use a regular html text so i am going to have a paragraph text with a class of text and here we can say for now let's just say loading like so so here is our text so now you can see the canvas is pushed down but we want the text to be on top of the canvas so we are going to say our text to have a position of fixed so let's say dot text to have a position of fixed and let's say this should have a font size of let's try 50 pixel like so and let's also say the font family to be Arial like so let's say font weight will be bold so font weight bold like so and let's center it so we can say left to 50% and we're also going to, going to say transform 
equals to translate x so translate x and uh, it will be negative 50 percent so now if we save this as you can see our text is in the center as you can see our text is in the center so let's also say the top should be 10 pixels so let's say top to be 10 pixel 10 pixel like so also we want some shadow so let's say text shadow so let's say text dash shadow and let's say 0 pixel from the x axis 2 pixel from the y axis the blur can be 5 pixel and let's, let's use some dark colors so let's say rgba 0 0 0 and opacity can be let's say 0.3 so now the text is a little bit more visible okay now i want to create a method in our doll doll class so inside the doll i'm going to create a method called start so start what this method will do is start the doll so the doll will look backward for some time then it will turn around and look forward for some time then again do the same so let's do that so in the function first thing we are going to do is say look backward so let's say look backward so this dot look backward and now we want the doll to keep facing backward for some time so we want to use some delay here or we want the execution to be stopped for some some time so i'm going to create a function called delay so function called delay and what this function will do is take time as its argument and then return a promise that will resolve after the given time so we can use this to stop execution of our codes for for a while so now we can make our start function asynchronous by saying async and here we can say await delay and let's say we want to delay for one second and after one second we want this to look forward so we're going to say this dot look forward and then again do a delay so we're again going to say await delay and let's say 1000 second also and then we're going to call the this dot start function so this dot start so as you can see this is a recursive function okay so now in the set timeout so where is the set timeout instead of saying doll dot look backward we can say doll dot start so if we were to say doll dot start you'll see the doll looks backward for a second then turns around then looks forward for a second like so but instead of saying one second one second we can use a random number so this will make the game more hard and less predictable so let's do that so let's say the time should be math dot random so we're going to say math so we're going to say math dot random and we're going to say 1000 second this will give us a number between 0 to 1000 and if we were to add and if we were to add 1000 to it now we'll get an will get a number between 1000 to 2000 so the doll will look backward for one second to two seconds so if we now save it the doll looks backward for random amount of time we can do the same for the look forward so let's copy this Control c and paste it here so this time let's say 750 to 700 and plus 750 so this will look forward for 750 millisecond to 1.5 second save and now the doll looks at forward and backward for a random amount of time so this is more hard and predict unpredictable for the use player so now our doll looks at forward and backward for a random amount of time and we can press the arrow key to move our player so now we are ready to implement the game logic so first i'm going to create a function called init that will initialize the game so let's create a function called init this will also be an asynchronous function so async so here first what we'll do is delay we'll use await delay and we'll delay for let's say 500 millisecond and after that the text should say starting in 3 after some time the text should say starting in 2 starting in 1 and then go so first let's target our text so our text had a class of text so let's create that so let's say const text equals to document dot query selector and our text had a class of text so dot text text like so now let's go to our init function and inside the function let's say text dot inner text equals to we are going to say starting so starting in 3 like so so now let's call the init function so init save and as you can see now it says starting in 3 so let me copy this 3 more times so after 500 milliseconds it will say starting in 2 and after that it will say starting in 1 and then it will say starting and then it will say go so the game will start save it as you, as you can see it says starting in 3 2 1 go and after that we are going to call a function called start game so start game and let's create that function so function start game
So inside that function, we are going to call the st doll dot start. So let's let's delete this now, and we are going to call the doll dot start here. So let's say doll dot start. So now if we save it, as you can see, it says loading three, two, one, and after that, the doll starts moving around or turning around whatever you want to say okay now let's also show our progress bar so the progress bar will just be a cube so we're going to say let progress bar equals to we're going to again call our cube function so create cube so create cube and for the create cube the width will be let's say if 8 the height will be let's say 1 so height equals to actually let's say point 0.1 and the depth will be 1 like so so if we save it okay we have some error that is because we also have to pass a position x so let's say position x should be zero save it okay this should be d equals to one or depth equals to one save it so now we have this progress bar here okay the width is too much so let's say which which should be five here is our progress bar we want the progress bar to be in the top so let's say so we are going to say progress bar dot position dot y equals to let's try 3.35 if we save it as you can see here is our progress bar now we need to make it functional so as time goes the width of progress bar should decrease so let's create another constant so let's go to our variables here and let's create a constant so let's say const time limit so that this will be the time limit for our game so time underscore limit let's say the time limit should be 10 second and now in the start function where is the start function let's find it out so here is our start function so that we can again use the gsap so we can say gsap.2 and we want to animate our progress bar so let's say progress bar dot scale so we're going to say dot scale so we're going to set the scale x to 0 in the time limit or in 10 seconds so if we now save it as you can see the progress bar starts shrinking down also we can specify easing function here so we can say is equals to none it will be linear like so so save it and now the progress bar moves okay one thing you will notice is the player can start moving even before the game is started so like as you can see i can move before the game has started so we don't want that so let's create a variable called game stat for game status so in our variables here we're going to say const game stat for game status so game stat so initially the game stat will be loading copy this and let's go to our event listeners here so if we are and inside the if we are going to say if game stat if game stat is not equals to started then we don't want to do anything so we're simply going to say return so now if I press the arrow key as you can see the ball does not move so inside the start function here the start game we can say game stat equals to started so game stat equals to started but I just realized that since we are reassigning to a constant will it will give us some error so let's go back to our variables here instead of saying const it will be late like so so now once the game is started we can press the arrow key to move like so so now pre we pretty much have everything ready to go now we just have to implement the game logic okay so now in the player class where is that so let's find it here is our player player class we are, we are going to create another fu function called check this will check the if the winner has crossed the board or if the winner has lost so, we, so inside the update function we can call the check function so let's say check this dot check and since in the animation loop we are keep calling the update function the check function will be also called again and again so now what we want to do is check if the doll is facing forward and the velocity of our do our velocity of our player is not equals to zero that means the player was moving when the doll was looking forward that means the player has lost so let's try to do that so first we need to create a variable so let's create a variable called let is looking backward so is looking backward so by default it could be true so let's say true it should be is doll looking backward like so so once the doll looks backward we want this to be true once the look, doll looks forward we want this to be false so let's see how we can do that so let me copy this inside the doll class we have this look forward and look backward button let me cut delete this we don't need it as you can see it takes 450 milliseconds for the doll to look backward so we can do a set timeout so we can say set timeout and we're gonna run this function after 450 milliseconds and after 450 milliseconds what we can do is say is looking backward equals to true 
and let me copy this and let's paste it so control v so here we want to say looking backward equals to false okay but even if the doll rotates just a little bit we should be able to move so instead of saying 450 let's just say 150 so if the doll has rotated just a little bit we are free to move like so save now let's go to the players check function so in the check function we're gonna say if player so we are going to say this dot player info player info dot velocity so velocity is greater than zero and the doll is looking forward so we are going to say if exclamation mark is doll looking backward that means if the doll is looking forward in that case we can say we can for now let's just say alert you you lost okay now let's try to play it So as you can see when we try to move when the doll is looking forward we lose so it is working and in the check function we, we also want to check if the player has successfully crossed this line so if the player's position x is greater than the po ending position that means the player has won so let's say if player dot position dot x is less than ending position that then we'll say you won so let's comment this out for now and let's try to move And as you can see it says you win after your position dot x is here so and because we set the balls x to 1 the, the ball have to cross a little more space for than the starting angle so instead of saying will same position dot x is less than this we can say position x is less than this plus 0.4 like so and let's try to move so now as you can see once we cross this line which it says you won so now we can uncomment this so control for slash uncomment okay let's try to play it okay it looks like we have a little bit of error let's fix that so in this function we have messed up in the look backward function this should say 150 and this one should say 450 instead like so so save it let's try to play it one more time it says you lose let's play one once more And as you can see, if we successfully cross the track, it says you win. Now, instead of alert, what we want to do is, now as you can see, if I try to, if I say, okay, the alert will keep coming. That is because the check function is being called again and again. So if the player wins and lose, wins or lose, what we are going to do is, if say, game stat equals to over. And now let's go to the animation frame. Here is our animations frame. So we are going to say if game state equals equals to so game stat equal equals to over we are going to return so we don't want to this function to be called ever again so like so okay so let's save it and now let's try to run it so once you lose it says alert zero you lose and now you can close it and once you lose you cannot move forward anymore okay now let's make the test text say you win if you win and say lose if you lose so let's do that so let's go to our check function here we are going to say text dot inner text equals to so text dot inner text equals to you lose and here we can say text dot inner text equals to you win so let's try to run it okay let's delete the alerts we don't need the alerts anymore So as you can see if we try to move it says you lose so let's try to win now and now it says you won another thing we have to tackle is what if the player runs out of time if he runs out of time we want to say time over so let's do that so inside the start function so let's go to the start function here we are also going to do a set timeout so we are going to say set timeout like so and we are going to time run the function after the time limit is over so we are going to say time limit times 1000 that is because our time limit is 10 which is in second but the set timeout takes time in millisecond that is why we 
we are multiplying it with 100 so after that we are going to say we are going to say if the game stat is not equals to over that means the the player have run out of time but he couldn't clear this track so we are going to say text dot inner text equals to let's say you run you ran out of time so you you ran out of time okay now let's see what happens if we run out of time as you can see it says you ran out of time and we cannot move anymore we can do anything but if we refresh we can play again so let's try to play oops we lost let's try to play one more time we have lost again let's try one more time this time I'm gonna win oh no I have lost again let's try one la one last time and there we have won the game so now everything is working as intended so now we have successfully created the red light green light game from squid game i hope you enjoyed this video and you have created it yourself as well don't forget to like and subscribe and i will see you next time